Hey guys, today we're going to answer the question, how can I use data from a random sample to make an inference about a population? So when collecting data, population refers to an entire group. It's not always practical to collect data on the entire population. So often data will be collected on just part of the group or a sample. And then we can use these samples to make inferences. An inference is a conclusion reached based on evidence and reasoning. We can make inferences or predictions based on samples just like we would when given any other data. So let's look at this first one. It says a streaming entertainment service company emails a survey to all its just subscribers. Subscribers were asked which type of TV show are they most likely to subscribe to. From the completed surveys, 40 are randomly selected to review. The results are shown in the table. So there was a total of 40 that they looked at to get this data instead of looking at every single person that filled out the survey. The subscription service currently offers 120 channels. We're going to write true or false for each inference based on the information given. So remember, there was a total of 40 surveys that were viewed. So let's determine if this one's true or false. It says of the 120 channels available, approximately 25% should be related to cooking. So we want to know what percentage out of 40 um, the 10 number who watched cooking shows would be. So we're going to set up a percent proportion to see if it would be about 25%. So I'm going to do 10 over 40 equals x out of 100 and solve this to see if that matches the percent that they um, told us. So I'm going to simplify 10 over 40 to 1 fourth. And then when I cross multiply, I get 4x equals 1 times 100, which is 100. And then I would divide by 4 and I get that x equals 25. So the 25% matches the sample that they collected. So I would put that as true. 25% said cooking. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says more than 40% of all subscribers are likely to watch sports channels. So out of the 40 that they um, looked at, 15 said sports. So let's set up a percent proportion to see if that percent is more than 40. So we would do 15 out of 40 equals x over 100. I'm going to simplify this. Both of those numbers are divisible by 5, so that would simplify to 3 over 8 equals x over 100. And now I'm going to cross multiply. 3 times 100 is 300. And 8 times x is 8x. And then I would divide by 8. And 300 divided by 8 is 37.5%. So I would not say that more than 40% of subscribers are likely to watch um, sports channel. Based on this percentage, it is less. So this one is false. And then this says to meet the needs of the subscribers, the service should offer 27 comedy channels. So 27 comedy channels, I want to figure out what percentage that would be, and then I'll match it to the percentage um, of the subscribers. And remember, they are going to offer 120 different channels. So let's figure out what percentage would be comedy by doing 27 out of 120 equals X out of 100. So I'm going to cross multiply here. 27 times 100 is 2,700. And then 120 times x is 120x. And then I'm going to divide by 120. And 2700 divided by 120 is 22.5. So 22.5% of the channels would be comedy channels. Let's see if that matches um, what they surveyed which would have been nine out of 40. So I'm gonna do nine out of 40 and see what percent that is. 
So 9 times 100 is 900, and 40 times x is 40x, and then I would divide by 40, and 900 divided by 40 is 22.5. So that matches perfectly both of the percentages based on their survey and then in their channels would be 22.5%. So I would say that is true. Okay, then let's look at this last one. It says the ratio of sports channels to cooking channels should be three to two. Let's look at what the ratio was in their survey of sports to cooking. It would have been 15 to 10. And both of those numbers are divisible by 5, so that ratio would simplify to 3 to 2, which matches what they put. So that one would be true as well. Okay, let's look at number 2. It says, Coach Harris is selling t-shirts at a dance competition to raise money for her dance team. In order to help her figure out what type of shirts she should buy, she randomly distributes a survey to determine the color of shirt people prefer. The results of her survey are shown. So, 135 went tie dye, 80 went gray, 125 went neon and or navy, and then 55 went neon. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out the total here by adding these four numbers together. So, 135 plus 80 plus 125 plus 55 is 395. So, she surveyed 395 people. And then it says, based on the survey results, which is true about the t-shirts Coach Harris should order? So A says Coach Harris should order an equal numbers of each color of shirt. I would say false on that one. Neon was 55. Tie-dye was more than twice that. So that would not be a good idea based on people's preferences. Then B says less than 25% of Coach Harris's order should be navy shirts. So 125 out of the 395 people wanted navy shirts. 125 out of the 395 wanted navy shirts. So let's figure out what percentage that would be. So I'm going to cross multiply 125 times 100 would be 12,500. And then 395 times x would be 395x. And then I'm going to divide by 395 to figure out this percentage. So 12,500 divided by 395 is about 31.6%. And the statement said less than 25% of Coach Harris's order should be navy shirts. That is false. More than 25% should be navy based on the percentage we got. Then C says Coach Harris should order 50% fewer gray shirts than navy shirts. So gray was 80 and navy was 125 um, so 50% of 125 would be like 63 and the gray is going to be more than that. So that's not true either. And then D says Coach Harris should order about, order about two and a half times as many tie dye shirts as neon shirts. So neon shirts, 55 people selected that and Let's figure out what 55 times 2.5 would be. 55 times 2.5 would be 137, which is really close to the tie-dye shirts. So I would say that that is true. She should order about two and a half as many tie-dye shirts as neon shirts.